Fernanda's. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Fernanda, thank you for being with me on, on Sad Season. Cool. All right, crew. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. If you know me, I'm Hannah. I lead email and community at Girl Class. So it's a pleasure to meet you if you haven't already. Uh, if you're not familiar with Girl Class, we're a six week growth marketing course and community filled with, filled with founders, marketers, and freelancers. We just teach folks the skills they need to, to grow their careers and their businesses. Uh, but today, I'm really excited to learn how to grow our LinkedIn's with Brendan Hufford. So, Brendan is the uh, founder of Gold Sprints. He's also a growth class mentor and a very influential content creator. So in 2023, he focused his attention on growing his LinkedIn to over 35,000 followers and counting. Uh, Brendan has taught thousands of people how to use content marketing to grow their businesses and create passions. And he's excited to help you as well, too. So I'm going to drop all Brendan's links in the chat for you. So if you want to connect with him, uh, he's also in our growth class Slack. But here's his LinkedIn and newsletter. Definitely sign up for that. Uh, so this is an ask me anything question. We do have a uh, session with time at the end for any questions. Um, I know a bunch of you submitted beforehand, so Brendan's got those already. Uh, if you have any questions throughout, feel free to drop them in the chat. You can also send me a private message and I'll ask the question on your behalf. Just a reminder, there's no such thing as a dumb question. We're here to learn. This is a judgment-free zone. We just ask that you keep it kind and respectful. With that being said, I'm going to pass it over to you, Brendan. You can be a little disrespectful. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was a high school teacher for 10 years, so I've had to stare down 14 year olds for oh. a decade. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Like you're not, you can't be ruder than them. Uh, they were my favorite. So like, we're all, we're all adults. So we're going to do great today. Um, oh, okay. Thick skin there, my friend. Yeah. yeah. I, empathize, I empathize with you. <laughs> it, uh, we're going to bring all that energy today. So here's the thing. Uh, what I want to share today, uh, I was talking to Sarah ahead of time and uh, I gave Hannah like eight seconds of notice about this. So this is my fault if it goes terrible. Um, I have taught this specifically how to use LinkedIn to grow your career and your business to hundreds of primarily agency owners in the past. And these people have paid thousands of dollars for this training. And I have really tried to make it that good. It is a lot. We usually deliver this over the course of like three or four days. Um, I'm going to, I always love when I get on something like a call like this and it's not somebody going boring and slow. I want like, I even tell I'm really high energy. I don't mean to sound like a used car salesman. This is just like how I talk, but like, I like this type of energy. So this is kind of the speed that we're going to go at today. We're going to go through a lot. I'm going to give you everything I have. We're going to make sure we save time for questions. I will keep, again, teacher vibes. I keep a very close eye on the clock because I need to know how much time is left. But uh, we'll kind of dive in and we're going to go end to end. Uh, we'll keep it really conversational. So I'm literally going to present like this. I'm not going presentation mode. I freaking hate it when adults read slides to other adults. So we will do none of that today. Um, but I will talk through a couple things and this does again, like this was originally for agency owners. So if you don't run an agency, if you're in-house, this still all works, or if you're just growing your own thing, it all still applies, but we talked through a couple of things. Let me give you an example, like ha understanding who owns these processes, right? Like who should own these processes. If you're working for somebody else, you're trying to grow your career or things like that. This might be helpful for you. I'm also happy to share, uh, all of these slides, but giving you an idea of like who owns processes, what tools do we need, that sort of stuff. I like to give people like, you can plan this stuff in Google Sheets. You can use Shield Analytics to track all of your LinkedIn metrics, or you can just look at it on LinkedIn. It's not that big of a deal. We don't want to overcomplicate stuff. Um, we'll talk a little bit about booking. I use Calendly. You can use HubSpot. You can use, you can book me. It doesn't like anything. Chili Piper doesn't matter. We need some way to take LinkedIn and convert it to business, right? Like we have to getting a, and I'll, I'll poke fun at a couple people with love today uh, that have built huge LinkedIn audiences, hundreds of thousands of followers. And you're like, what could you pay that person for? And you're like, oh, I don't know. They just have a lot of followers. Like we don't want to be that person. Um, so we'll try to talk through all these things, but ha having these things in place, like having some ability to book calls with you, having some way to make money, having a CRM in place is really, really valuable, super helpful. Um, let's talk about the LinkedIn ecosystem. So this is me and my oldest son years ago, uh, pre-COVID when I still had short hair and I looked happy about my life. Um, 
the whole point here is like, you don't need a huge audience. I have 35,000 followers on LinkedIn. That is not a flex because it, it started with a thousand people and I built the wrong audience at first and I've made a ton of mistakes. I also don't have anything to sell you today. Like I said, I'm giving you the whole thing um, right now. The, the whole point is like, you can do all of this today. Like you can take everything we're talking about today, get started, do it if you haven't been already. Um, it, it has ballooned quite a bit, but this is what I want you to look at in this graph is not these numbers. I'm not cooler or better than anybody. The, these are boring graphs. This is a slow up and to the right growth. There's no, you know, there's uh, whatever this was, this post here got shared a bunch. I guess that's what that like vertical line is. But like, this is slow linear growth, which is exactly when you're attracting the right kind of audience. That's the way you want to grow. You don't want a viral moment where 10,000 people that are not your ICP all of a sudden follow you because they're not going to engage with your content. They're certainly never going to buy anything from you. They're not going to work with you, that sort of thing. Um, but it works like this stuff works. You don't see it in my posts. Like if you follow me on LinkedIn, you don't see any of this stuff happening. Um, you don't see that the post I made today, I see it only got 2000 impressions. And frankly, that's not that impressive. I had one, I posted a thing that was an invite to my community on Sunday. And that thing got like 65,000 impressions in six hours. But today with a thousand impressions, I have two sales calls booked off of that. Right. So this is where we're like, I'm very focused on like, let's create content people love, but also in your, I'm going to keep saying this, like also stuff that makes us money. Um, speaking of that, like these, this is leads and pipeline, but I want you to see that I'm not just like making this up. I use uh self-reported attribution. When people fill out my form, they tell me why, you know, what led them there. A lot of people put LinkedIn. 2022, I first again, this is pipeline. This isn't revenue. I did not make $2.3 million in 2022. Let's be like really clear about that. Nor did I make a uh, two point. This is just again leads, but like it's consistent that slow growth. Like I drove just roughly about the same in 2022 as I did in 2023. You all can see behind the scenes of like where I get most of my clients from, but it is still pretty heavily linked in. Um, and like I said, I've taught it to other people. This is Tim Hansen. He runs an SEO agency uh, called 530, uh, which if you write those numbers out, they look like the words or the letters SEO. Um, he was like, you know, he had a couple thousand followers, wasn't making any money. Um, this is myself uh, and Ryan Stewart talking to him about how that's grown. You can see now he's at 25,000 followers. Again, not a huge amount of money. Uh, but he, we were like, hey, like how much money have you made from being on LinkedIn? He's like about 200,000 pounds. I think it's hilarious that he refers to American dollars as freedom money. Uh, that's one of the funniest things. Uh, Tim's also one, of, if you don't follow him, he's really fun. He's one of my favorite people uh, on the planet. But like this stuff works. Like this is just him following exactly what I'm showing you today. Um, the first thing is just optimizing your profile for getting people to work with you and getting them interested in you. I will literally, this is my whole profile in one screenshot. We're going to walk through these sections. This is the stuff that matters with the trophies. These other things matter less so. Um, a couple things, and I know this sounds silly. This is my old profile photo. I need to take a better new one with longer hair. This was a problem for me. Uh, if you haven't updated your LinkedIn photo in a while, might be time to start. I literally went to a conference a couple months ago and nobody recognized me. Not to say they should, like I'm a person that's important and like, how do how dare you not recognize me? But like, these were people I talked to on the internet every day and I was standing next to them in person. One of them, this is so silly. One of them literally messaged me on his phone, like, hey, we're all hanging out. You should come down here. And I'm like, John, I'm here, right? Like they didn't recognize me because I still had this beautiful, whatever this was, 2018 Brendan on here. But what I liked about this photo was my eyes point where I want people to look. This is like an old school like marketing tactic of like put people's photos and have them looking at the thing you want the reader or the audience to look at. So I always have myself like facing the feed. Having something up here that tells them like, hey, like go down to the featured section. I have a cool bonus if you want it. Same thing here. This is super corny, but I wanted to see if it worked. My SaaS marketing secrets like I'm Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels or whatever. Uh, I'm a big believer in the platform, so I pay for LinkedIn premium. It doesn't always work. Uh, I'm meaning like the product, like LinkedIn is not a great product, but 
having that social signal there of like, I'm a premium subscriber. It's kind of the, I, it's not great, but it's not as cringy as like the blue check on Twitter. Now, if that, if anybody is with me on that, like, I feel like all the corn balls on Twitter, like pay for that blue check. And it's like an instant, I'm the worst kind of person signal. Uh, this is not that on LinkedIn. It's actually still like, all right, that's a serious professional. Same thing here with this. Like I, I don't, you can put your position or your job. I'm the founder of this company or the owner of this, or I'm the VP of marketing here, whatever you want to put. Um, I'm a big believer in this word exploring because that's what I feel like I do professionally. I just explore what works and I'm taking you along with me on that journey. And you can see other people choose different things, but similar stuff like Tim's stuff. It's the reason that he makes a lot of money from LinkedIn is because he's putting the value up front. I've driven this much revenue. I can increase traffic this much. Like you're in, those are immediately interesting. Um, same thing with Jessica and what she's put on there. And even uh, if you don't know Austin Belsack, he's uh, pretty popular on LinkedIn because he just talks about like growing your career and interviewing and stuff like that uh, and career coaching, which it is the perfect platform for that, but still does similar things of like, let's have that in the headline. Um, I He takes way more advantage of the platform even than I do. If you hover over his profile, there's like a little video. Uh, this is like an audio introduction. I also love it when people do this because it teaches you how to say their name. I found that to be really helpful and names are really important to people. So if you ever do meet somebody that you've connected through LinkedIn, immediately knowing how to say their name is really valuable. They'll also uh, appreciate that in kind. The next thing is the featured section. I did this wrong for a really long time, but you can see there's some similar themes here. Um, I immediately called Tim out on this. Is like, this is a great testimonial. It just doesn't fit. You just have to be aware of what fits on there. Uh, this was the mistake I made for a long time. I had made all of my stuff for uh, an SEO audience. That was my background, right? Like I do SEO, I talk about SEO, follow me for SEO, pay me for courses and coaching and hire me to do SEO for you. And that was fine. But the problem was I ended up building a huge audience of peers that didn't want to buy anything from me. They just wanted my knowledge for free. I'd literally get messages like, hey, have you ever published anything on this topic? I want to do that. Yeah, friend, pay me for it. Like you you're literally spent, like, do you not understand like how the dissociation that's happening in your head? So I change. And also, if you look at this, like this isn't, this graph doesn't even make sense. It doesn't fit. It's not compelling. Um, I used to think like having a blurry graph was helpful, but most people it doesn't create an open loop. It doesn't make you want to click. You just think it's broken. Um, but with that said, it has had some impact. I have an immediate link of like, do you want to work with me? These graphics are the same because I want people to just like good landing page practice of like have the ad look like where they're going. So when they get there, it feels familiar. Same thing here, this blurry graph, it's up here. And it's like, hey, I'll give you the actual high res version of this and it's free. And here's some social proof. Um, I like this for a featured section. Two core calls to action. Pay me directly or get this free thing. Um, most people will choose one or the other. Uh, making it a binary choice also makes it much more likely that people make a decision as opposed to non-decision, which is what most people do. They also want to see that you're doing stuff on here. Uh, we want to create content for our ICP, like I said, not our peers. I love to publish every day. Uh, I'm now trying to be like a total psychopath. I'm publishing twice a day now. I don't recommend that. That's a lot of prep. You also need a lot in the bank. So I've noticed that you can reshare. If you've ever had like a great LinkedIn post, if it's more than six months old, will you do me and your audience a favor and share that again? They forgot. They don't care. I have shared probably the same post every six months for the last two years. There's probably like 30 of those. And I keep sharing them every six months. I have a, um, a spreadsheet of them. You can keep sharing that stuff. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to have a problem with it. You absolutely can. Um, sorry, Ariana, I'm sorry. I'm like getting real jargony. That's so corny. Uh, yeah, your ideal customer persona or uh, ideal client profile. Like there's other words. Like it means the exact same thing. It's basically like who who is our person that will buy from us? Um, and this is also social proof. Have you ever gone to somebody's profile and it's like, the last thing they posted, it says like three months and you're like, oh, I guess they're not 
serious. Like it's nice to see like fresh things and also see engagement on here, right? Of like, oh wow, there are a lot of people that are following this person. I see followers, I see how much engagement um is on there. The second to last one is just your about section. We just want to communicate a couple core things. I have a process. I've done this before. I like to call this old game versus new game. Like unlike other people who do X, only I Y, like have a premise to it. Um, I say on here, like, this is exactly like, this is what's wrong with the way people do it. I wanted to do it a better way, et cetera. Here's all of that. Many case studies, like just boom, 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 quick hits of like some cool stuff I'd done. Again, like this was very SEO focused for the time. And then the last one is experience. Again, just showing people like I've worked, like this is important to keep updated over time. I also like, you can do this, all of your little projects and everything. I have separate profiles for my agency, my community, my newsletter. When I launch a podcast, it's probably going to look similar with an icon. Uh, and I'll put that in here. But these are like, I put companies that I have like an evangelism and advisory role in there. And then like companies I've worked at directly. Um, it's super helpful to keep this updated. And I like to at least for places where I've had some sort of outcome, put that in there. Like I still haven't done that with active campaign. I probably should, but I like to say like, I worked with these companies. Here's the outcomes I got, et cetera. Um, before we dive, this is a, uh, actually super helpful around ICP. Before we dive into that, any any profile questions? I, have a I know that was me. Um, you said you had like three different um, profiles or whatever for, for your different roles. Do you like, are those different? Are those all connected to one main LinkedIn? I'm kind of confused. Like, do you post on all of them? How does that work? Um, do you mean, do you mean these ones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, I just posted myself, but I like having a separate business profile for different projects because it allows me to tag them. So if I'm talking about like joining my, here, let me, uh, let's see if I can, can we do this live? Let's roll the dice. This is like consulting 101. You never open like a random fresh tab on a call. But the oh wow just putting everybody's business out there brendan good for you that's why we don't do that um anyways so what i like what i've started to do is i've realized like linkedin wants to keep you on the platform so what i've started doing is just tag like hey if you want if you're a SaaS marketer and you want to you know see me do number one in real time i kind of listed out four things join this community and when they click over to it or they click over to my newsletter they can see You'll see my like admin view, I think. Um, but they'll get a link to the website. They can learn more about it. It just keeps people on platform and gives me an opportunity to tag it. It also gives me an opportunity to like, if people did follow this, I could update these things. Um, but that's such a silly meme. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I don't post a lot on those on business pages though. They don't get any reach. The only business pages that do well are basically meme accounts. Um, and I don't have time to run one of those right now. Tasha, is that helpful? That's super helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah. The awesome. Let's talk about ICP. So it's really important, uh, making fun of the frat bros that they all dress the same. Um, it is really important. We stand out. Like we can't just be another, uh, what does Sarah call them? Like a brotato. Uh, <laughs> we want to, right. Uh, the those are absolute potatoes, by the way. The, their dads all work in finance. Um, but anyways, focus. It's really important to stand out. That's the only thing I'm trying. Like as much as we can communicate that in our profile, that really really matters. Um, there, are, everything gets easier when we have clear positioning. I'm not gonna walk through positioning a ton in here, but it's something I think about a lot is as much as possible having the right positioning. Um, people are afraid to focus. If you look like I have focused a ton in my own profile, uh, there are a couple ways that you can, a lot of times people say like niche down. I don't feel like that's super helpful. I think about it more like positioning and you can position yourself a lot of ways, right? You can have a highly specialized service, a productized service, a very like tight specific industry or a lot like 
the Venn diagram overlap, you just kind of have to like choose your hard, right? Like what hard do we want? But I can tell you if you're like, I do copywriting. Great. That's a start versus just like, I'm a marketer, right? Like if you're a copywriter, great. For who specifically? And it feels scary, but the more you drill into things, um, my buddy Ryan's agency uh, it does law firm marketing. Everything is focused around that. Uh, my buddy Cliff's agency works with e-commerce and it is very, very specific who they work with. Same thing with me. The SaaS companies I work with, if you're between this revenue and that revenue benchmark, we are probably perfect to, to work together. Um, but that really makes a difference. Uh, and like I said, transitioning from peers, instead of being like, hey, SEO people, follow me. Now it's like, I want VPs of marketing and uh, VPs of marketing, VPs of marketing and CMOs at SaaS companies between 10 and $100 million in revenue. I want them to follow me. And it starts to become like really, really clear. Fernanda asks, do I add every client I work with? No. And I'm not going to call out people who do, but I looked at a couple of people's profiles the other day who do that. I feel like it gets super corny when it's like you have 45 different advisor to the head of marketing on there. It's like, okay, dude, you're just listing out all your clients, but you're saying you were an employee when you worked with every single one for like six months. It's like, I get it. It's fine. Um, it's just not for me. I think it, this feels... Hold on, let's let's rip back up here real quick. Um, I do put some stuff on there. Like this is a social signal, right? That Adobe reached out to me to work with them. That I'm an advisor for Nevadic. Like this is an ongoing relationship. But I don't, especially because I work in sprints, I don't do long-term retainers. That's my part of my positioning in the market is like everybody in SEO does retainers. I don't, because um, I don't think it's necessary. It's better for them and it's bad for companies. Uh, so I'm not going to list out everybody I do a sprint with here. It'd be, you know, like I'd be adding 40 different pieces of experience a year and that's not ideal. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't do that, but you can, I think it just depends on whether, you know, how you feel about it. Um, the, do I recommend, Becky said, do I not recommend putting bullet points of achievement? No, if I was smarter and better at this, especially ahead of a presentation like this, I would do more of this. Like under each of these things, I would have bullet points. Um, you can see like I do that even with, the, I know this is like a LinkedIn talk and not a website talk, but I have firm beliefs about service websites of social proof. Again, like this is similar to the LinkedIn profile. I have a process. I've done this before. I just want an, an obnoxious number of up into the right graphs. Um, smart people saying nice things about me, including something silly from my friend Bridget. Um, and then and only then do I talk about myself. So I don't put all of these bullet points under here, but I probably could do a better job on LinkedIn, like putting those under here for sure. And then, yeah, if you anywhere you've ever worked or are working, definitely put outcomes there for sure. Um, I think it's also helpful sometimes uh, to have like, I, too many people try to copy this and it feels weird. So it kind of has to be genuine. But like putting like, you know, you're the this type of person, right? At the beginning of it can be really helpful to let people immediately know, like if I follow this person or I read their stuff, I'm going to get this type of value out of it. And like I said, also like your ICP is on there. Whoever your ideal client or customer is, they are on LinkedIn, I promise. It doesn't matter. And this was again for agencies, but it doesn't matter if you work with dental hygienists, personal injury attorneys or directors of marketing you should be connecting with them kind of proactively. I still do this once a week. I just reach out to a bunch of people who seem interesting. Um, like I think I reached out to Allie because uh, Allie's the director of marketing in the same city as me and works at a company whose protein I use. Yeah, I'm going to reach out. Like, that's cool. That seems fun, right? You don't be, like I said, I, I use the word corny a lot, but like, hey, I saw your thing we can all see. Like I saw your director of marketing at Ghost wanted to connect. I'm expanding my network. Like, yeah, but like do better, right? Do do less and do better. You can also use tools like SparkToro um, to figure out like who, you know, where your audience is, who they follow, who's interesting, stuff like that. Um, and even like in case you're like, I'm not sure if I could be uh, an influencer. Um, we got Howard here who I'm not sure if Howard, I think Howard's serious about all this stuff. And I don't mean to roast him, 
but like this is perfect this is like that like t-shirt of like three wolves howling at the moon type, like what there's a lot going on here, but he runs Dental Town. Um, and there was a what were the other ones? Uh yeah, Dental Town, Hygiene Town, and Ortho Town, which all sound like dentist stuff, but I think it's for dental hygienists, orthodontists, and dentists. Um, I don't know that those are different, but he has 42,000 followers on LinkedIn. And sometimes you get gold. Like if you're looking for content ideas, seeing who your audience follows again, like if you're an agent, a marketing agency that works with dental hygienists, I never would have known this, but it's like, wait, these are both people in the comments. Like this is weird and fine. I'm, I'm whatever. I have strong opinions, but both of these comments are talking about why standard oral, uh, home oral, oral hygiene is almost useless. I had no idea, but if I'm, if I'm selling to dentists, and they all have that opinion, I just got a really cool insight, right? Like there's absolutely cool stuff that you can find in here. Because I think at the end of the day, like that's what we need when we communicate on LinkedIn. I need you to feel right away that I get you. Because I do. If you're my audience, I do get you. And your audience wants to feel that way too. So giving them immediate feedback, especially you can see I, I love this like uh, finger pointing down, I guess. I use it way too much. Um but I want you to know right away, winners in SaaS, the first job of every SaaS marketer. There's an elephant in the room for every SaaS marketer. I taught psychology to over 1,400 high schoolers. Here's nine things SaaS marketers need to know. And people love commenting, Brendan, this applies to more than SaaS. Yeah, man, I know. It's always a man. Uh, yeah, man, I know this applies more than to just SaaS, but that's my audience. So I'm going to frame it that way obnoxiously. I know this applies to e-commerce. I know this applies to any, like whatever, but that's who I talk to. Um, I'm also a big fan of buildups instead of teardowns. I think these other people do things really well. Uh, I think Chris Dreyer runs one of the biggest like legal marketing agencies, does a great job. Um, I think this is really funny and perfect. He also looks like an attorney in both of those photos. That is on purpose. Um, same thing with Chris Chris Walker. Um, I don't love a lot of Chris's marketing for a lot of reasons, but I do think he does really well on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, Julia McCoy also does really well. Julia does some really cool stuff with AI with uh, her company Content at Scale. I'd already mentioned Caitlin, uh, Justin. And just in case you're like, my audience may not be on LinkedIn, you're wrong. Like Dan Go has almost, I mean, he probably has like a million followers at this point. He talks about fitness stuff on LinkedIn. And you're like, that seems weird, but people on LinkedIn, I know this sounds, uh, I don't mean to be manipulative, but like they have a lot of money and you're there because you care about being a high performer in a lot of cases. So I would argue it's actually way better that he be on LinkedIn than on Instagram or wherever else. Um, so there's always opportunity in there. Uh, that was like literally a run through of the fundamentals. We're already halfway through our time. So I want to make sure that we spend, like we've thought through our profile. Most people go to content first. They don't spend time in their profile. It's kind of like trying to build an email newsletter. And then like, you don't have a website. You have to have a home base for people to come back to. So I think the profile stuff, even though it's not as shiny and nice or whatever, like it is really important fundamentally. Um, I'm going to move quickly through this just because I want everybody to understand the difference. And like I said, I'm happy to share these slides. Uh, Hannah, I'm sure we can share them out to everybody. Yeah, cool. So you can feel free to check out these slides. And also, like I said, I'm in, uh, or like Hannah said, I'm in the grow class Slack. So uh, I'm a mentor in there. You're more than welcome to DM me anytime about any of this stuff. I, again, not just talking fast for fun. I like really like this stuff. This is a lot of fun for me. Um, this is my content framework for LinkedIn. Almost everything I share fits into one of these buckets. Uh, I take a piece of IP that I've created or a problem statement. I'm just looking at bullet points. Here are the five problems my ICP has, my ideal client. Here's the problems they have. For every one of the problems, I'm going to make a post about how to solve that problem or just kind of uh, almost like twisting the knife a little bit. I need a better analogy. That's violent. But like, you know, like really digging into that pain point. The second one, and almost no, almost nobody does this one where they talk about the roadblock to solving a problem. Everybody's like, yeah, this is a problem. Here's how to solve it. And it's like, but what's going to happen next? What's the next thing they run into, right? Because the next thing, I know if I get you bought in of like, hey, we should do SEO, 
The next thing is budget. The next thing is how to explain SEO to your CEO. That's hard because it's real hand wavy and it's a Google black box and we don't really know. And it's mostly backlinks. So like, what do we do? Um, that's a hard sell to your CEO if you don't know how to talk to them. So I'm going to give you that. I'm going to be like, Hey, the next thing you're going to, and as soon as people see that, they're like, Oh my God, you've really, you've sat in my seat before. You really know me. You really get me. Give them a template to solve the problem. In fact, let's visualize some of these. Um, like I said, uh, you saw, I actually, this, uh, I posted in the past, similar graphs, different content a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about what we share, but I use images that stop the scroll as much as I can. I think we all should. Whatever gets somebody to stop the scroll, you can use text, but if you're going to use an image, the goal is to get them to stop. And look, same thing as like a thumbnail on YouTube. It has to stand out enough that we stop the scroll. Um, I actually reused it, uh, almost the exact same image. I added an arrow to it to get you to create an open loop, which we'll talk about in a second of like, what happened there? I want to know. The next one is how to solve the roadblocks to the problem. This is literally just a fun satirical conversation that is not real, uh, but it is real like in a macro sense of like, these are just all the roadblocks people ask me about. Same thing here, like you're going to run into these roadblocks. Uh, useful templates of how to solve things. Um, you can see again, like the mistake that I mentioned earlier of like, these will appeal to people who don't buy from me. Just a lot of peers, a lot of people that have the same job as me, and definitely a lot of other service providers. I've noticed that like over time, people who are other marketing consultants are like, oh, I want to I want to join your community. I want to see all your stuff. And I'm like, I'm not sending it to you. Not because I'm protective or I have some sort of like stuff that nobody knows about. I don't. Um, that's just not who I want to attract. So I'm not going to spend time there. I'm not going to do that sort of thing. Um, outside of grow class, of course. Give them templates. Like I said, this is how I explain SEO to C-suite executives. All of these are different templates that I've run in the past. Uh, they also, to, your, to this point, I don't, it's not like a template. Everybody thinks a template has to be like a literal thing. Like I'm giving you a Google doc or something. It A lot of times it's just a framework of like how to think about things. Here's 14 questions you should ask. Here's three levels of pain points. Here's a three-step get started playbook for building a community from Reddit's co-founder that sort of thing. Um, Grammarly sends this email. It's worth millions of years. It's one email. Here's what's in it. That's really compelling. Everybody is going to click see more. They want to know what it includes. Same thing with client case studies. Um, I'm a big believer in like these arrows and talking through all of this sort of stuff. But again, show the results, like show what you've done, get those. Listen, if you've never like gone through and screenshotted stuff out of analytics or anywhere that you can show outcomes, please go do that today. Take 30 minutes, go through everything, pull screenshots from everything you can. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make um, in showing the results is they're like, oh, I did this. And they're like, I increased traffic, uh, whatever, X percent. And it's like, that's cool. But you know, what's cooler than that is this screenshot that shows 2.38 million clicks coming to the website. That's a way more compelling narrative than just me saying what I'm saying. And then the last piece is just like a high level, interesting roundup. These don't have to be your own things. These are not your clients. This is just rad stuff I found. I talked to the uh, Airbnb team about how they did SEO. I was like, what is with this weird chart? And this guy, like the uh, growth designer leaned into his computer and looked at it because we we're on Zoom. And he was like, oh, uh, those big bumps are the times we focused on SEO. We didn't focus on it all the time. We only did it like in short sprints. And I was like, that's a cool story. I should share that with people. Um, I found some cool stuff about like what this is HubSpot's traffic. And I found out like uh, here in Flanagan there uh, before we became the CMO of Zapier is their senior VP of marketing. He shared like what they did years ago. So I just created this like it's a cool high level interesting post. Same thing of how ConvertKit grew and all of this other stuff. This is like what I would call like pillar content. This is you can't come up with this every day. You'll exhaust yourself like trying to go super deep. Sarah, question. Uh, yes. So you mentioned client case studies, which is fantastic. My background, and hopefully this is other people there too, so I don't hog the limelight. But um, my background is uh, exactly the experience that you're talking about, but all of the results that we generated, which were really positive and frankly spectacular results for our e-commerce clients, was with a marketing agency. So they own all of those things. 
if you're someone in that position and you're just trying to get traction, you've got a lot of really great results to speak about, good experience. How do you translate that into metrics when you're just starting out with client case studies? Or is that something you don't even consider when you're just gearing up? So you were in-house at an agency and did those things? Yeah, multiple. So like three. And I've got specific results for all of them. Um, I just don't have the actual screenshots. Yeah. Just, I know this sounds silly because I've been in that exact same spot. Just don't, just do it going forward. It is what it is. Like, I don't have screenshots, you know, like the stuff that I had uh, shared, like this stuff. Hold on a second. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, profile. Like these things when I was at the, this was like primarily a web design agency, yeah. but I don't have, you can see this is even updated since I took those screenshots. Uh, mm. I don't have screenshots of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't figure out taking screenshots until I got here. Mm. And then I was like, okay, we do, we screenshot everything now, any outcome that I'm even, but you can still say like, I, like give them the numbers for sure. If you give them the numbers, because they're numbers, right? And without that validation, I don't want it to feel snake oily. Is there something in your experience where you validate it, I don't know, through a strategy? You don't want to give away the strategy, but at the same time, you're like, I do want to add some authoritative heft here. Um, so like yeah, boost I mean, traffic by 500% by blah, 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 blah. Like, would you add that blah, blah, blah part or no? Oh, totally. Um as much as I can, I want to say like what we did. Okay. Yeah. I think any, any time and like, you can keep it as high level as you want, but because the, the reality is like most of the time people that hire me, it's not a knowledge question. It's a time question. It's a time and expertise. And like, I've seen stuff. It, it's the difference of like, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think of a good example of this it's like going you're traveling somewhere and it's like you've read all the travel books but then you also have a guide that's there that lives in that area that's like i can take you to the places and you're like yes i've read about this in the book and i'm really glad you're here because i didn't know not to walk down that alley that's super sketchy it seemed like the most direct route like that you know what i mean like that's what you get hired for is like weird analogy that i'm making up on the spot but like it's like don't go down that alley type of stuff where like yeah like they might conceptually know those things or they've seen your posts and i'll be honest with you uh i wish sarah that like more people saw what i put on linkedin and then went and did the thing they don't yeah. like people don't yeah. um i do i'm like crazy though like i've realized this over time that like people used to i was like really deep in the like on like the internet marketing world like a lot of like courses about courses and webinars about mm -hmm. webinars. Mm -hmm. those people um and a lot of click funnels and like the people would do these launch sequences where they would do this educational content up front and then they'd be like buy my course i would just go do the thing that they told you to do in the launch stuff and come back to them and be like, hey, like I did all this stuff you told me to do in the videos. And they were like, oh my God, nobody does it. People just buy the course. And then most of them don't even look at the course, right? They just put it on the shelf. So yeah, give it, give away all of it. You have nothing to lose. I think okay. by, by sharing as much as you, like teach everything you know. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. for sure. I mean, it's even the way I feel about like today. Like if I could package all this into LinkedIn posts, I probably would um, if this was my audience, right? Like I'm I'm doing this because I care about all of your success publicly this might not like be the most interesting same thing with like i this was originally a training for agencies but that's not who i want to attract so i don't i've never i coached agencies for two years three years uh and never like i've never tried to like put any of that stuff out like it's always been shared privately in settings like this so yeah, share everything you know, just make sure you're attracting the right audience. Um, this is a framework I got from Justin Welsh, who I've also talked about in here, is just like outside of this pillar stuff, um, what do we post on a regular basis? And it's really about leading, discovering, and reporting. We'll walk through it kind of briefly. Um, I'm a big believer in pain point marketing. The problem is most marketers live here. They're just like, hey, what are you struggling with? All right, cool, that's what I'm gonna write about. And they don't get into like 
the impact of that pain or like the personal implications of it, right? Like a sales, per like if you're selling to salespeople, it's like, oh, I want to, um, you know, close more deals. And like you drill down deep and you're like, oh, their parents think that being in sales is a garbage profession and they're trying to like prove themselves to their father. Like all of a sudden, like the way we talk about these things changes, right? We have to understand the personal implication. I think it's time. It's definitely worth being the 5% that like digs that deep in there. Um, here's good ways to think about this. Like if you're creating content, again, daily content is like, hey, we have an issue with this and you can create a post that's like, hey, here's how you solve that. Um, if you don't solve it, the business impact of this or the personal impact is this other piece. And then, like I said, getting really deep in here, this is where I like to talk to my audience and not just use like an, like I made a joke here of like, not just an export from Ahrefs, right? Um, I want to give them like an up into the right graph that launches, that gives them a bulletproof career forever. That's a selling point. If you work with me, this gives you a defensible career. You will have results at this company that you hired me. These are your results at the end of the day, just as much as they're mine. If we do this and we do it right, you now get these results that carry with you through your whole career. Don't you want that? And they're like, yes, that's a personal implication. That's a level three pain point as opposed to like a level one of like how to get more traffic or something. I also think through like how to document topic ideas. Like I said, leading, um, again, this is really important to lead your clients, not your peers. If you are a copywriter, write about copywriting for your ICP, for your ideal client. Don't write about how to grow a copywriting business. This is going to be hard not to do. You're going to see your audience commenting. You're going to see 700 other copywriters follow you. They're really engaged. You're like, hey, I can talk about how to grow a copywriting business or, you know, whatever. Like I could make a ton of posts about how to grow a productized service business. And I don't because that just gives me an audience of peers. I want to lead my audience who are SaaS in-house SaaS marketers. Um, same thing with discovering things like just go out, do original research, find cool stuff. This was literally just an export from SparkToro of what the most popular podcasts were uh, for this audience. And I was like, cool, I'll share that. Right. I'm just, I discovered this new thing. I give you a couple examples here. Um, and then, like I said, reporting out, like I'm talking to people, I'm interviewing people, I'm sharing that sort of stuff. I'm listening to interviews with uh, Kieran Flanagan and then sharing what he shares. Um, this has been a lot of me monologuing. I want to make sure we get to the questions. I'm happy to share this. There's also a lot of like copywriting tips in here of like exactly how to do things. I do want to highlight this. This is a really good example of what I mean by talking about your clients. Andy Raskin, if you aren't familiar with him, is a messaging and positioning expert. I would argue he is just as good as April Dunford, just without the book. Um, but if you look at Andy's posts, you will see this thing in common. Just spent an hour with a venture-backed CEO from a Series A company, a Series C company CEO, the CFO of a Series B company, CEO, CEO, like head of enterprise sales at a series B SaaS company, CEO. It is very clear who he works with. And he says it over and over and over and over. The same reason I put SaaS marketer. I want you to immediately, if you work in-house in at a software company, I want you to immediately know that you're for me. Um, but like I said, you can share personal stories. You can share client stories. Uh, I love a good carousel. Um, this is the audience participation section. What's wrong here? I'm say it all looks the same. I don't really know who he's talking to. What's who's the audience? There's no audience. The audience is just clout. LinkedIn copywriting tips, how to master SQL, uh, virality, product-led sales, growth cheat sheets, and then a cold email framework. Who is this for? Yeah. Also, I get really sketched out as a marketer here because you're not a master in all these. You're not a cold email master, but you're also a master at SQL. And you've also done product-led sales and you're a growth marketer and you know LinkedIn copy. Like, this is getting grifted from other people most of the time. You saw a bunch of other people talking about this and you made a carousel. 
Um, it also doesn't focus on one audience. Like who is the, who is Maxim's audience? I'm not trying to be mean, but this is a great example of it, of you're just creating whatever's popular, whatever gets attention. Carousels work, I'm going to do them. This format works, here's how they look. They all look the same, right? And now I just write about whatever I think will get views. I think it's like these 30,000 followers are probably all over the place. He probably has SDRs that cared about the cold email stuff, right? He has uh, people that use SQL, like a technical audience, but then he also has salespeople that are doing product-led sales, but then also growth marketers, but also LinkedIn. Like it's all over the place. Have to keep it super focused. Um, from a content perspective, like I said, dramatic charts work really well to stop the scroll. Um, anything that will get people to comment. I'm also, for, you can't do this every day. I've noticed there's somebody I follow on LinkedIn that I unfollowed simply because every single week they're like, comment to get this free thing. And I... It, you exhaust your audience. But the fact that my buddy Ryan could write two sentences and get a half million impressions and you know almost 4,000 people wanted this thing, like that's pretty powerful stuff. You have this in you already. The client deliverables you're done, you've done, the decks you've created if you're in-house, whatever it is, you have these. And again, if you haven't done the screenshot thing right now, Go in, make copies of all of your decks, make copies of all of your frameworks, everything. Like you already have stuff that would be really, really valuable. Um, I won't dive too deep into all these other like writing frameworks. I want to make sure we save some time uh, here at the end, but there's a bunch of other copy stuff in here. Um, there's other things that I call like a warm inbound funnel of just like how I reach out to people. Uh, you can see, and I'm sharing this transparently. Um, that when people reach out to me and they are my exact ideal client, I always respond the same way. Hey, name, and I have to do this, this isn't automated. This is me taking the time and care to do this. Hey, thanks for asking to connect. I immediately am reminding you, you asked me to connect. I am not cold connecting with you. You asked me, how's everything going at your company name? And I say it again and again and again and again and again, because like I want, them to know that, hey, you reached out to me. You saw some interest in connecting with me. How's everything going? I'm just getting straight to business. How's everything going in your company right now? And I'm leaving it open-ended and a lot of people don't reply, but I would think through that. And this is exactly, again, like I don't usually take a lot of connection requests of people I don't know that aren't my ICP, right? That's how you end up getting like all the sales bros uh, become all of your connections. Same thing here. Like I'll also reach out to people uh, that have done something new. If I was working with dentists, I would reach out to people who had just opened a new dental location. Hey, so you just opened a new location. Like if you wanted to do out, like more outbound, you could absolutely do that too. Um, let's answer some questions. So I actually haven't, we, I pasted these in, uh, but I haven't read through them yet. So this will be, this will be, we'll do it live. Uh, what strategy have you found most effective for going to LinkedIn present from scratch? So two pieces, I would do a lot of connecting with people that are my ICP, um, just reaching out to them and stuff, or just like connecting with them and like choosing quality over quantity. Don't send out a thousand connection requests a week, send out five that are really meaningful. Um, and I think also just like staying the course, like even if you're posting like banger stuff that you're like, this is amazing and I'm really proud of this and like two people like it and nobody comments save it and you can post it again in the future when more people are going to see it, right? Uh, but like I said, this is, if we go all the way back up to the top here, I did this, like, if you're starting from scratch, I you can literally see a scratch point. I, like I did the same thing, right? Like we all started from scratch. You just have to, it is long and it is boring and that's what it'll look like most of the time, but that's good because that's what actually makes you money and like allows you to help people and build the right audience. Um, so I think usually, I, I know this is like not the most helpful advice outside of, every, it, first of all, the answer is everything else I've already shown today, but like just be aligned on like the timeline for that to happen. Um, how do I approach creating a content strategy? I think it's that mix of like pillar content and daily content, right? The pillar, the five pillar pieces that I shared with you that align to a problem. And then you just take the next problem, create five more and keep going down the problems your ICP has. Um, and then like mixing in the daily stuff, the personal things, the anecdotes, all of those pieces. 
Oh, certain day or time. I kind of hate that, like, this is still a thing we have to think about. Do you all remember when, like, this was all the rage? Like, I feel like Buffer made this really popular. Like, the perfect time to post on Twitter, the perfect time to post on Instagram. And then, like, everybody was posting at, like, 9.37 a.m. on Tuesday. And it's like, I okay, cool. Um, personally, I post at a... Here, let's look at it. No, I'm not hiring. I don't want to manage people. Um, sorry, it's so aggressive. Uh, you can see, I schedule my posts. Also, this is how you don't uh, go crazy doing this. You just schedule your stuff ahead of time. Batch it. Um, so I do it every single day at 7.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. Just because I'm trying something. If I only had, if I was only doing one a day, I would do seven, I've done 7.30 a.m., I'm on central time. So that means it goes live at 8.30 and 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. I just want people to see it before they start their day. I have observed from a professional standpoint that once people start their workday, they're not on LinkedIn as much. But if it's good, it's good. It's a quality debate, not a tactics debate. If you post something amazing at 11, 17 a.m., it'll do just as good. So if it's good, it's good. This just helps me keep a regular cadence of when I do stuff. Um, what performs best in terms of engagement and reach? Uh, this is not a bad question to ask. I'm not going to like poo-poo the question, but if I can like reject the premise a little bit, uh, I think what we want is resonance. Like I want depth with people versus just reach. The reach stuff is cool, but it doesn't let me help people as deeply. And it, transparently, I don't make as much money pursuing reach as I do like thinking through like what's actually going to resonate with my audience. And the resonance stuff is everything that we kind of talked about today. <clears throat> um, are there any tools or strategies? Yeah, I use my notes app. This is just how I work. I use my notes app. Anytime I hear something cool or I have a neat idea, I put it in my notes app on my phone because I can also pull that up on my computer. Um, I take screenshots of stuff when I'm on my phone and I'm scrolling and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I screenshot it. That way I don't feel like I'm going to lose it. I also use my bookmark spar to like bookmark cool stuff. Um, the input is the output. So I think about that a ton of like, just I need a place. So when I'm going to write or I'm going to create, I'm not staring at a blank page. I always have like 50 things to look at. Um, advice for professionals looking to establish themselves as thought leaders in their industry. Um, yeah. This is the most important part. Uh, too many people think that being a thought leader is about thoughts and it's actually about leading. I think it's a huge mistake a lot of people make. Uh, you have to think through like what leadership does my industry do my ideal customers or clients what do they need and live there um and yeah so uh i don't mean to mispronounce your name inez uh said in the chat consistency is more important than time of day absolutely and then last one on here how do you manage your time effectively and maintain a strong presence without uh it becoming overwhelming yo it is overwhelming sometimes there is so much I don't want to sit here and pretend like I'm not a real person. Like this shit sucks sometimes. Like it's bad and hard. And sometimes I'm like, I'm dumb. Everything I share is dumb. Who wants to listen to stupid Brendan? Like I feel that way probably three times a week. I don't know. And then I just do it anyways. Like that's the biggest thing is like, I just do it. And like, I don't. So part of it is like do it anyways. And the other part is batching it. Like if I'm feeling good and I have the time I'm going to do it then because I, I know things are going to happen in my life. It's cold out. And if I have to like do it, if I'm like, Oh, I have it time blocked for after lunch, but like, I'm going to go home for lunch. I'm going to be super cold. And one of my kids is probably going to do something insane while I'm at the house. And I'm going to come back here and not be in the mood. I'll just get it done now before I go home for lunch because I'm, I'll just ride that. Like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is, but like, when I feel like it, I will try to ride that as much as possible. Um, but like I said, also like batching it, sitting down. And then it's also super helpful. Here, I'll just show this to you. 
Uh, I don't know why I didn't show this to you earlier. Boom. So like these are these are all the good posts that I've done in the past. And I have this sheet uh, that has them all in here and the date, the month and year that I've posted it. So, and then these turn yellow when it's six months old. So you can see this one, like I first posted it. I just came up with it. Like red flags of your, if you're hiring an SEO agency, here's some red flags to look out for. I posted that in February of last year and I posted it again in November. And I, you end up over time having a collection of these. And then if you're like a really big dork for this stuff, like I am, eventually you turn them into like, vertical videos and you're like oh these now become tiktoks and reels and youtube shorts because they're really good video scripts they have a great hook they have a great through line you already know they resonate because they did really well on linkedin you can turn them into other stuff um i think too often we repurpose things that didn't have a purpose to begin with i don't recommend that like you don't need to record a podcast and split it into 37 clips when only one of them is good um repurpose things that have purpose but this is very much, and I, just to be, just so you know, like I started here, the same thing I taught you today. These are, this is my general framework. And I went through the same things. I even linked up my posts. Um, and then eventually I just kept stacking them. And over time, this compounds and eventually I'll have 365 great posts. I'm not saying I'm never going to post anything new, but like I could literally post something every single day that I know is going to do well. And that's where I want to get. And I think that this process is achievable for everybody. That was me talking at you all for like a fucking hour. Sorry. <laughs> that was a lot. It I, was great I though. It, it was so action packed, like a lot of value in there. So thank you, honestly, for taking us behind the scenes and showing us like your live LinkedIn and all your Google Docs and all yeah. that. Appreciate that. It so feels much. more fun to show that kind of stuff instead of being like, here's a super polished like presentation or whatever, you know? A hundred percent. And thank you everyone for showing up today. All your great questions. I will be sharing the recording and the slides with you after uh, we're at the top of the hour. So thank you all for being here today. Take it easy, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks again, Don't Brandon. Forget, you, can always, you can also always hit me up in the Grow Class Slack. Please and use that. I'm in too. there get all your notifications. Yeah. You can definitely hit me up there You can follow me on LinkedIn. If you want to and check out my newsletter, just to like meta, see what's happening. But if you have questions about this, I'm always down to help. So feel free to hit me up and grow class. All right. Thanks everybody. Take it easy crew. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Yeah.